So I'll just uh, close the other websites that we were using before the class and just open the PPT. So the last time we were talking about this kind of thing, how to enter the market and the different risks associated with each one. So <coughs> we talk, finished talking about the uh, joint ventures. Yeah. So we said that joint ventures allows us to share the economic and political risks with another company. We have the environment is very complicated. It might be better to do a joint venture. So, joint ventures are separate legal entities. We said it's like two companies come together and they make a new company. So, A and B come together and they make a new company, C. Legally, that's a separate company. Okay, so both people share in the management, both companies share in the management. So we can also have some government organization and a private company. And both of the partners own equity in the company. So consortia is similar to the joint venture, except instead of A and B, we have D and E. So consortia means more than two. Consortium. Okay, so we have a larger number of participants. Perhaps none of our participants are operating the country. So we want to put together our resources. So we have human resources and financial resources. Put them together, we can do better. So these days, these kind of uh, group agreements or alliances are getting more popular. <laughs> it's okay, I want to just give up to that. Firmly. So, with globalization, this kind of strategic alliance is more uh, popular. So strategic is like planning. So just going to close the door, you have to close firmly. Firmly. So you know the airline has some alliance. We have Star Alliance. Have you heard, ever heard of Star Alliance? Or another alliance. So a number of airlines join together <coughs> and they make an alliance. An alliance means like some kind of cooperation between companies. So for example these companies offer the frequent flyer miles for more benefits. So they share the lounge. Do you understand the lounge? Like VIP lounge for customers. And customer service, they can be put together by using alliances. So alliances is getting more common these days. Okay. So then the last one is direct foreign investment. So this one is the highest risk. It means that we are going to the country, investing in the country ourselves. Okay. So the first way we can do that, the easiest way we can do that, is by acquiring a company who's already in the country. Okay? So we buy a company, for example, uh, Coca-Cola want to sell some orange juice product in, in Korea, right? What company sell orange juice in Korea? Jeju. Jeju. So Coca-Cola comes to Korea, they decide to buy the Jeju company. They acquire the Jeju company. Then they already have the factory, the workers, the know-how, 
Okay, Coca-Cola is just going to change something slightly. Change the recipe of the orange juice. Perhaps change the production technique to make it more efficient. Okay, bring in some managers from Coca-Cola, change the marketing a little bit. But they have all the workers in the factory. They have some expertise. They even have the brand name. They can use the brand name if they want. So we saw that we, we talked before about the Chinese car company which acquired Volvo in, in Sweden, right? So a good way for them to enter the market in Europe. They acquired the Volvo, so they acquired the brand name, the expertise of the workers, the factory. The factory was making a loss. That's why Volvo had to be sold. But perhaps they could change some of the operations to China. Merger just means that the two companies are the same size. It's not as common as acquisition, but we usually say merger and acquisition. Merger, two companies are roughly the same size, they join together. So in a joint venture, two companies join together to make a new company. In a merger, the two companies just join together, so we just have AB. We don't have A and B anymore. Okay? A new company called AB. So this is called Brownfield Investment. Do you understand Brownfield? Yes. Brownfield is like from farming. You plow the land. Plowing the land makes the land brown. So the land is already prepared for you to plant the seeds. So this means the land is already prepared for you. You already have a factory and so on. On the other hand, we have Greenfield. In the Greenfield, there is grass. Can we plant the seeds in the grass? No, we need Brownfield to plant seeds. So Greenfield means there's nothing there. So Greenfield is the most risk. Okay? We go by ourselves. We don't have any joint venture. We just build a factory. Okay? This is FDI also. So we can see how much uh, investment is uh, Greenfield or Brownfield investment. So just go to the uh, internet, Google, and then just write here World Investment Report. Okay, we can see World Investment Report. Just start, start, start writing, okay? World Invest, then you see World Investment Report. Okay, so click on the World Invest Investment Report. We have here uh, 2014. Here we have PDF file, World Investment Report, uh, 2014, right? So, if we click on these links. We can get here. We can see, click on the first link. Click the full report. So just type in World Investment Report, click on the first link here, click on the full report here. Okay. So it takes a minute to download. But this is a report which is made by the UN. Okay, and it just tells us all about what kind of investments were made in the world last year. So on this document, we can see very well about FDI. Okay, we're talking about FDI, Foreign Direct Investment. Okay. Do you understand FDI? Yes. So Foreign Direct Investment is we're acquiring a company or we're building our own factory. How much of the stock of a company do we need to buy to acquire a company? Do we need to buy 100% of the stock of a company? No, more than 50%. Do we need to buy more than 50%? Yes. Always? No. No, we just we need to be able to control the company. Okay, the largest stockholder, it could be as low as 15%. The largest stockholder could be 5%. We could have a lot of small stockholders. If we buy 15% of the company, then we can appoint some people on the board of directors, two or three people on the board of directors. Okay? and we can practically control the company. So once we buy even more than, 
you know, 20% of the stock, it depends on the company, we could have control of the company. So you should have uh, this document, should be downloaded, right? Then we look at the, uh, first, uh, here, we can see FDI by geography, FDI by mode of entry, FDI by sector and industry, FDI by selected uh, investments, right? There's a lot of other information here we're not going to look at today. We're going to look at the FDI, so by mode of entry, so page 7. So first of all we have the overview, but we need to go past the overview, right? And then look at the pages. So one, two, three, four, six, seven. FDI by mode of entry. So let's try to find the page seven, right? So here we can see green fields in the first sentence. Okay? So it said that there was a downward trend in 2012 in FDI greenfield projects and in cross-border M&As. Do you understand cross-border M&As? So here we can see in this report the same vocabulary is used. M&A, merger and acquisition, or greenfield. Okay? Both of them was going down in 2012 and 2013, but it's been reversed. It's been reversed. Uh, the value of announced greenfield project increased by 9%, and the M&As increased by 5%. So here we can see the graph, the historic trend of FDI projects, 2004 to 2013. So we have uh, the orange line, greenfield projects. Okay, going up and then going down again. Uh, M&A, the green line, going up, going down. We can see that when we had the financial crisis here in 2007-2008, what happened? What happened to M&As? What happened to M&As in the financial crisis? Go up or go down? Because for company. Before the crisis, the MA was going up a lot, very quickly, right? Then what happened after the crisis here? Yes. It was going down, right? Why do you think that is? Why was the MA going down in the crisis period? Because company were concentrated to their general company. Okay, right. Just generally in the risk time, very risky time, people aren't as likely to invest in the new projects like, it. you know, they're not sure about the future. So they're not sure about this company, how it can do, right? When the stock market goes down, there are also some good opportunities for acquisitions. Many Chinese companies made acquisitions in the, in the US or Europe, because the US and European stock market went down, then the Chinese companies started to buy the European or American companies at a cheaper price. If the stock price goes down, you can buy the company at the cheaper price, right? And we can see now it's still lower than it was in 2005, 2006. So we can see that which two companies prefer, M&A or Greenfield Projects at the moment? M&A. M&A is the green line, Greenfield Project is the orange line. Uh, Greenfield. This is on page number 8 of the document, right? Yes. So they prefer nearly double the Greenfield Project, right, at the moment. <coughs> Where are companies investing? So here they divide up into uh, distribution and cross of cross-border M&As, so merger and acquisitions, by TNC is Transnational Corporation, or MNC, based in developing and transition economies. So companies from transition and developing economies, right, like Chinese companies or Vietnamese companies, where are they making their M&A 
right? So they are making 28% with the developed economies and 72% in the other economies. So we can find that, again, uh, more. you can look at yourself here on more information. We can see for different uh, industries, uh, we can see that uh, manufacturing is green and services is, is orange. Okay, for greenfield, we can see that the services, greenfield investment went up last year. So, again, just this is a useful document if you want to check about uh, these kind of things. So here they mention Sovereign Wealth Fund as well. SWF Sovereign Wealth Fund is uh, countries like China or Norway have pension funds or government savings. This is called Sovereign Wealth Fund. They also invest a lot of money like this. State-owned enterprises. Okay, so we, you can look at this again in your own time if you're interested in that. So. We can get an idea that the greenfield investment is slightly higher than the acquisition. What is the problem with the acquisition? What do you think is the problem? What kind of problems can companies have after they do an acquisition? Yes? They may become monopoly. They, they may become just big and bigger and bigger and bigger. And yes. So they might be allowed, first of all, yeah. because of the competition rules, right? Yeah, any other re any other problem they can have? Uh, cultural uh, cultural conflict. Because yes, can you think of any example of that? Benin mm -hmm. So there's a famous example of uh, Daimler Chrysler and Mercedes Benz, right? They made a merger, and they. Broke up. It's like a divorce, right? Like a relationship. So sometimes the management don't get on, right? The new employees don't integrate well into the company, okay? But other companies can use acquisitions very well. For example, Semex is a Mexican company. They started to make acquisitions in Spain, in Australia, in the US, right? They learned from each of their acquisitions because also from the acquisition you can learn new technology new ways of doing things, okay? So Semex learned something new from each company and then they, they put this system for all of their business, not just for that company. For example, when they went to Spain, they learned how to use a new type of energy, okay? Different type of energy, more efficient. Then they used this new type of energy for all of their companies then, later. So, also, we have some Indian companies making acquisitions, uh, especially they make an acquisition in the US or Australia or the UK for financial reasons, because they, they can learn how to manage their finances better, right? The US or the UK are better at doing the financial area. So if the developing market company buys the US or Australian or UK company, then they can learn about the financial area well. Right? So, with acquisition, any company can get some advantage, but we can also get some disadvantage in that we have to integrate that new company into our company. With Greenfield Investment, we don't get the advantage of the new technology or new brand names or so on, knowledge, but we don't have the problems of joining together. Okay? We're just going by ourselves. Do you have any question about this foreign direct investment? Okay. So the things we need to think about is, first of all, timing. Then, about the complexity of contracts. Is the contract very complex? Maybe it's better to do, just go by yourself and do some FDI. Transaction cost means, for example, when we're making the contract, do we have to spend a lot of time negotiating with them? That's a transaction cost. Or do we have to change our money every time? Pay some fees for that. Technology transfer. If we do the, 
foreign direct investment, perhaps we can keep the technology inside our company, right? If we do licensing or franchising, we have to tell the other people about our technology. Do we trust them? Are they going to sell our know-how, our technology to somebody else or not? Okay, uh, what about our product differentiation? The cultural diversity of the acquired firms, it's easier. For example, Semex started off acquiring companies in Spain because Spain had a similar culture to Mexico. So usually companies, their first acquisition will be with another company which has a similar culture. Okay? Then after that they can try, they learned how to do the acquisition, then they can go on to the harder step, acquisition of a company with a different culture, very different culture. Okay? Then uh, advertising and reputation barriers. So if we go to China and we do FTI, just make our own factory for selling in China. Can we advertise in China? Right? Is it easy for us to advertise? What about our reputation? Do they know our company in China? Is it better to license or do a joint venture then in China? So we have to consider these kind of things when we're thinking about joint venture, licensing, okay? uh, foreign direct investment. Or just exporting, just exporting. So then let's uh, discuss these questions with your partner. If you're answering the questions, you can also open the, uh, the Geishi Pan. Okay? On the Geishi Pan, I put some document. The reason I put on the Geishi Pan is that it's just uh, using for this class, right? So go to the Geishi Pan and under market Kiko Man, you can download the Word document, right? Just at the same time as you're discussing the question.
on the midterm, but it should say week one to seven. Okay? Until this week. This week is week seven. Okay? Next week is the midterm exam. Okay, in the two hour class next week we'll have the midterm exam. On Thursday? Yes, on Thursday, the two hour class. Okay, before that we'll do a review. Um, let's talk about the questions, discuss the questions. So, uh, Yi Jin Young, yes. first question. Uh, first, uh, when large market settlement can be identified? Mm -hmm. uh, second, Plans for all experience and no one. Okay. Uh, last uh, market globally, uh, a market diversity uh, carries with the additional final financial benefit. Okay. So we can diversify by going in different countries. We can learn by experience, right? We said the Japanese customers are very demanding, so we can learn in that way too. Uh, number two, Jin, John Jin Yong. I do understand it. Okay, uh, Yusol. Number two. So we did the phase one and phase two of the marketing plan, right? <coughs> and we decided, we did this phase and we did this phase, but we decided we're not going to sell our product in that country. Why might we decide that? Can anybody answer the question? 
Yes. Some country has program of phase one or two. Yes. Uh, this uh, program is a trigger marketing plan. Uh, companies pay. So company was seeking to uh, so successfully marketing play marketing plan. So mm -hmm. company exclude phase one, phase two, phase of program country. Yes, what kind of problems can we have in phase one and phase two? What yeah. kind of problems can we find? Uh, for example, some country program has a political pro problem. Political risk? Yes. yes. Uh, this one is a uh, this country practice uh, very very serious. Uh, no. Uh, party very hate multinational company. Okay. And this one is a very serious problem. Okay. So we decide not to invest in the country, right? What about in phase two? We didn't study yet, but if country logistic yeah. doesn't not control, uh, company do not very well distribution. This is a uh, company selling is paid. Okay. So another example is we have to adapt the product, but it costs us too much to adapt the product, right? We have to change our factory change our employees to adapt the product to the local market, but the cost is too high for the income. So we, we figure out all these things, and then we decide, is it worth it? We have to decide, we have to change our product because of this and this, okay? And there's this risk and this risk. So in the end, we have to decide, is it worth it to sell our product in that country or not, right? It may be that we could answer, no, it's not. say Korea, why would you choose to use a joint venture instead of exporting or foreign direct investment? I guess a lot of companies, just like with China, a lot of foreign companies also do joint ventures when they come to Korea. Asian, in Asian culture, the guanxi, what does guanxi mean? It's a Chinese word, guanxi. Is my Chinese pronunciation that bad? You know guanxi? Yeah, what does it mean in English? In English, it's just the name of a province. Uh, no, it's not the name of a province. No? Personal relationship. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you mean How do you pronounce it? Relationship? How do you pronounce it? Guanxi. That's what I said. There's <laughs> <laughs> different tones in Chinese, right? But, uh, yes. So what does it mean? Relationship, a good relationship. Okay, so it means that 
people do business with people they know, like their friends, right? Or somebody they have a relationship with. So we have this situation in Japan, in Korea, and China. So it's hard for a new company to enter the market, right? If you're a foreign company and you come here by yourself, because you don't have this kind of network of relationships. It's the same in any country, but it's uh, more culturally stronger in Asia, right? So a Russian company coming to Korea, it could be a good idea to do a joint venture, because then that person you do a joint venture with, they already have some network or relationship with, with local government, with the local companies, and so on. Okay. What about licensing? Um, so this good strategy for small and not very large companies. Yes. Um, what do they have? What does this small company have? What's their thing that they have? They're a small company, but they have intellectual property, right? Usually licensing, we're talking about they have some intellectual property, like a drug company, okay? Or a movie making company. That we, music, intellectual property, licensing is often used. Okay, uh, then <clears throat> let's look at this small short uh, case, kind of case. Well, actually, we just have uh, 13 minutes left, so let's do the internet task now, and then we can do that in the next class. Okay. So we are going to do, visit the websites of Ford and Nestle. We are going to compare their international involvement and strategies towards international markets. How do they differ? So another company I can give an example of is Zara. Do you know Zara? Yes. yes. Zara started off in Spain, yes. then Zara makes joint ventures in Germany and in Japan. Do you know why Zara makes joint venture in Germany and Japan? It's because they can't buy the land in the most important area in the city. Okay? In Germany, Zara wants to go to the high street, right? So that they give a good, that's like their advertising. If they, set, if they have a, their flagship store, flagship store is their most important store on the main street, most fashionable area of the city. It's like kind of advertising for them, right? But in Japan and Germany, nobody wants to sell them the real estate in that area. So Zara had a choice. We can go to another area, which is not the high street. Do you understand the high street? Right? Where is the high street in Korea? Where are the, all the fashionable stores, like Louis Vuitton or so? Myeongdong. Myeongdong, right? So Zara wants to make a store in Myeongdong, but yeah. they can't get the land because the land is owned by somebody else. So they approach the person who owns the land or the department store and they said, let's make a joint venture. A, B equals C, okay? They said, we, want to, we can share the profits with you. So they share the profits 50-50, okay? And they, Zara go into the building. So that's one reason why Zara made a joint venture. Okay, in other countries, in the Middle East, uh, Zara used like a uh, franchising system. Okay, or small country like Iceland or small country in Eastern Europe, with the high high political and economic risk, Zara doesn't want to go there themselves. The risk is too high. Okay, they could lose the money, or it's too country is too small. So they just allow another person to use their brand name, Zara. Okay, they sell them the license. You can use the Zara brand name, okay? Send them the Zara products, but that person is running the Zara business in that country and just paying the license fee as like a franchise, right? Then Zara does some FDI. In other countries around Zara in Europe, like France, okay? In the UK, in the US, Zara goes there and it buys the store itself, buys the store, Okay, and just invests itself. Why? Because it wants to take 100% of the profits. In the other countries, it's sharing the profits. In Germany, it's sharing the profits 50-50. In Japan, in the Middle East, it's uh, just getting a lic licensing, so it's not getting the pro all the profits, right? But in France or the UK, Zara is able to do the foreign direct investment. It can buy the store, 
and it can get all of the profits, 100% of the profits, it can control them. Okay, so different companies have different strategies. So let's have a look at just the website, visit the Ford website and the Nestle website. Okay. <coughs> They have Ford just has cars mainly, Nestle has a lot of different products. Okay. So I'll try to figure out what is their strategy. Are they doing just exporting? Are they doing uh, some kind of licensing? Are they doing mergers and acquisitions? Right? So what you can do is, you can check their international website. If you're from Korea, you can look at the Korean website of Ford. What is Ford doing in Korea? Is Ford in Korea as a joint venture? Does it have a different company called Ford Korea? Is it doing FDI? What about Nestle? How is Nestle in Korea? So just, you can check for your own country. So try to find out how is Ford or Nestle, how did they enter your country? So you're living in Korea, right? So how do you think Nestle entered Korea? Did it buy some Korean brand already? Did it acquire a Korean brand? Is it using a joint venture in Korea? Is it just investing itself? Is it exporting? What about Ford in Korea? Okay, so you guys can check for your own China and Russia. Okay, so check check the Russian website of Nestle and uh, Ford, right? You guys can check the Korean website of Nestle and Ford. You guys check the Chinese website of Nestle and Ford, right? You guys can check Danish or Czech or Slovakian website. Right? So if you go here, change country, right? Nestle, you can choose your country here.
Fine by Googling, right? I'm Googling for down the UK. So just by typing in Google Nestle and the country and acquisition or Nestle and the country and joint venture maybe more accurately. See the results. We can see that, uh, for example, in the I was doing the UK. In the UK, Ford made an acquisition of uh, Jaguar and Land Rover, acquired in 1989 and 2000. So in the UK, do you know Jaguar, Land Rover? So Ford acquired these companies in the UK. So they made some manufacturing base in the UK, through the, helping to make the base through these companies. Okay, and Ford has three factories in the UK, so it's manufacturing in the UK and seven in the UK. Okay, what about Nestle? It appears that Nestle did not make many acquisitions in uh, in the UK, right? Nestle is in Switzerland. So Nestle, we can see here, is also producing, investing money, right? Foreign direct investment in the UK. So it's going to the UK and setting up its own manufacturing for coffee and so on. So uh, Nestle, again here we have more investments. So in the UK, Nestle seems to prefer FDI kind of strategy, right? Exporting an FDI kind of strategy, whereas Ford in the UK 
is not exporting, right? Cars are quite heavy to export. So Ford is just uh, made some acquisition in the UK and selling in the UK, right? It's also foreign direct investment acquisition. So just in the next class, uh, try to find out about your country, how and Ford and uh, Nestle are doing in your country, right? If you didn't, if you, maybe you found the answer already, uh, then you don't need to check, right? Otherwise, just check briefly, right? How did Ford and Nestle enter, or what? How are, what's their strategy for your country? So let's finish there for today. Yes.